The number of higher order derivatives doubles according to the number of variables and the order. There is also a theorem attached to the combination of derivatives. Learn about it here in Differential Calculus. Using the same equation from our introductory concepts, z is equal to x squared plus y cubed, we have the two partial derivatives arising from the variables x and y. From the partial derivative of z with respect to x, we have the second order of derivative as second partial derivative of z with respect to x and the second partial derivative of z with respect to x and y. The other first order derivative, the partial derivative of z with respect to y, generates the second order derivatives of the second partial derivative of z with respect to y and also the second partial derivative of z with respect to y and x. Now taking a closer look at this pair of partial derivatives, it is notable that they are the same though their orders are flipped. The question is, are these partial derivatives truly the same or not? A French mathematician, Alexis Clairaut, who validated Newtonian principles in his book, also had made a theorem in calculus. He said that in higher order derivatives of continuous functions, the order of derivatives do not affect the result. Thus, the derivative pair of our concern should be equal according to Clairaut. Let's verify Clairaut's theorem with the function x cubed y squared minus 4y raised to 6 all upon x cubed. We start by taking the first derivatives and since we do have x and y, we do expect two partial derivatives, one with respect to x and another with respect to y. Let's start with the partial derivative of the function with respect to x and get the partial derivative of f with respect to x as the constant y squared multiplied by the partial derivative of x cubed minus 4y raised to 6 times the derivative of x raised to negative 3. This is the transformed term for 1 over x cubed. So moving on with the differentiation, we get y squared times 3x squared multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to x minus the constant 4y raised to 6 times the derivative which is negative 3x raised to negative 4 multiplied by the derivative of x with respect to x. dx over dx is 1, so the derivative is reduced to 3x squared y squared plus 12y raised to 6 times x raised to negative 4 which can be written as the partial derivative of f with respect to x as 3x squared y squared plus 12y raised to 6 over x raised to 4. For the other partial derivative of the function with respect to y, we can simplify this as x cubed times the derivative of y squared minus the constant 4 over x cubed times the derivative of y raised to 6. The derivative is then x cubed times 2y with the derivative of y minus 4 over x cubed times 6y raised to 5 times the derivative of y. dy over dy is 1, so the partial derivative of f with respect to y is taken as 2x cubed times y minus 24y raised to 5 over x cubed. With both first order derivatives already determined, we move to the second order. From the former derivative we solved earlier, we take the derivative of the derivative of f with respect to x, but this time with respect to y. And we read this as the second partial derivative of f with respect to y and x. 
we get 3x squared times the derivative of y squared plus 12 over x raised to 4 times the derivative of y raised to 6. Then differentiate further to have 3x squared times 2y multiplied by the derivative of y plus 12 over x raised to 4 times 6y raised to 5 multiplied by dy over dy, which becomes 1. So the second partial derivative of f with respect to y and x is 6x squared y plus 72y raised to 5 over x raised to 4. We are not to take the second derivative of f with respect to x anymore, as we are only verifying Clairaut's theorem, although you can go on and solve for the other derivatives. From the first order partial derivative d of f with respect to y, we are also to differentiate it once more with respect to x, to have the second partial derivative of f with respect to x and y, which becomes 2y times the derivative of x cubed minus 24y raised to 5 times the derivative of x raised to negative 3. This simplifies into 2y times 3x squared with dx over dx minus 24y raised to 5 times negative 3x raised to negative 4 with dx over dx, which reduced to 1. Giving the second partial derivative of f with respect to x and y as 6x squared y plus 72y raised to 5 over x raised to 4. So, in conclusion, Clairaut's theorem is indeed true. The second derivative of f with respect to y and x is equal to the second derivative of f with respect to x and y. Another example to verify the theorem uses the function z is equal to sine of x over y minus x cubed times y raised to 4 plus x times y raised to 9. We again start to take the partial derivative of the function with respect to x. The partial derivative of z with respect to x is cosine of x over y times the derivative of the unit x over y minus the constant y raised to 4 times the derivative of x cubed plus another constant y raised to 9 times dx over dx, which is taken as 1. The derivative can then be simplified as cosine of x over y times the new constant 1 over y multiplied by the derivative of x minus y raised to 4 times 3x squared with dx over dx plus y raised to 9. With dx over dx as 1, the reduced form of the partial derivative of z with respect to x is cosine of x upon y all over y minus 3x squared times y raised to 4 plus y raised to 9. Let's continue by taking the second derivative of the function, this time with respect to y. Now check each term of the function and note that the first term requires quotient rule, which will make the derivative truly long. Let's get right to it. The term's derivative would have a denominator of y squared and the numerator has the lower term y times the derivative of the upper term cosine of x over y minus the upper term cosine of x over y times the derivative of the lower term y. The next terms have the constant negative 3x squared times 4y cubed with dy over dy and 9y raised to 8 times dy over dy, where the derivative of y with respect to y is 1. So the function turns into y times negative sine of x over y times the derivative of y over y minus cosine of x over y. Then everything is upon y squared minus 12x squared times y cubed plus 9y raised to 8. To simplify all the derivatives in the function, we would need to transform y in the denominator as y raised to negative 1, so it would be easier to use the power rule. 
having the new form, we get negative xy sine of x over y times negative 1 with y raised to negative 2 multiplied by the derivative of y minus cosine of x over y. Then all is over y squared. The other terms would be copied as they have already been simplified. Cancel out the negative signs and transform the negative exponent to have a new form of the function as xy sine of x over y minus cosine of x over y and these two terms are over y squared minus the other term 12x squared y cubed plus 9y raised to 8. At this point, we can cancel out y on the first term's numerator and take the least common denominator. So we get x sine of x over y minus y cosine of x over y, then everything is over y. And yet the fractional numerator is again over y squared. Then minus 12x squared y cubed plus 9y raised to 8. Create a single denominator for the first term and have the final second partial derivative of z with respect to y and x as x sine of x over y minus y cosine of x over y upon y cubed minus 12x squared y cubed plus 9y raised to 8. On the other hand, we start from the original function and we take its partial derivative with respect to y. We get del z over del y as cosine of x over y times the derivative of x over y minus x cubed times the derivative of y raised to 4 plus x times the derivative of y raised to 9. From the first term, factor out x and transform 1 over y to get cosine of x over y times x with the derivative of y raised to negative 1 minus x cubed with 4y cubed times the derivative of y plus x times 9y raised to 8 with dy over dy taken as 1. So the resulting function becomes x cosine of x over y times negative 1 of y raised to negative 2 times dy over dy minus 4x cubed y cubed plus 9x times y raised to 8. Again, dy all over dy is 1. So the first order partial derivative of the function with respect to x is negative x cosine of x over y all over y squared minus 4x cubed y cubed plus 9x times y raised to 8. Take a step further and have the derivative be differentiated with respect to x. And just the same as earlier, we have to use quotient rule for the first term, giving y squared times the derivative of negative x cosine of x over y, plus x cosine of x over y multiplied by the derivative of y squared. Then the two terms are over y raised to 4. Continue the derivative with negative 4y cubed times the derivative of x cubed plus 9y raised to 8 times dx over dx, which is taken as 1, while dx over dy is 0. y squared in the first term cancel out as well. Another thing to consider is the first numerator in the first term requires product rule, making the derivative negative x times the derivative of cosine x over y plus cosine of x over y multiplied by the derivative of negative x. They are over y squared. Then the next terms are 4y cubed times 3x squared with the derivative of x plus 9y raised to 8. Simplify the function to get negative x with negative sine of x over y times the derivative of x over y minus cosine of x over y all upon y squared minus 12x squared y cubed plus 9y raised to 8. Factor 1 over y in the first term and get x sine of x over y times 1 all over y times dx 
over dx minus cosine of x over y all upon y squared minus 12x squared y squared plus 9 times y raised to 8. dx over dx is 1. So the function becomes x sine of x over y minus cosine of x over y all upon y squared minus all the next terms. Have the least common denominator of the two numerators and get x sine of x over y minus y cosine of x all over y all over y all upon y squared. Then have a single denominator by combining all y's to have the final second partial derivative of z with respect to y and x as x sine of x over y minus y cosine x over y all upon y cubed minus 12x squared y cubed plus 9y raised to 8. What we have right now is exactly the result of working with the second partial derivative of z with respect to x and y. Thank you.